It is Tuesday, and the Our Promise campaign is in full effect, which means, once again, we are exposing you to an amazing nonprofit, philanthropic cause here in the state of California. Today's travels bring us to Roseville, California, and I'm so excited to introduce not just one, but two guests that we have joining us today, Elisa and Selena. They are here with the Latino Leadership Council. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you both? Good. Thank you for coming. Very well. Thank you. Good. Well, it's our pleasure. You know, every Tuesday we highlight some amazing nonprofits, and, and truly yours is one that is going to be, I think, so inspiring for so many of our viewers at home. Can you tell us a little bit about the organization and the great work that you do? Absolutely. Um, the Latino Leadership Council is the only nonprofit that focuses on the Latino community here in the region. Wow. And that's important because we have about 600,000 Latinos in the Sacramento Plaza region, and nobody is focused on them and their needs. So we were formed about 15 years ago because we had families who were not getting access to health care, mm. um, kids who were struggling in school, issues going on with some of our young people who uh, they were getting challenged and they had mental health concerns and they didn't know where to turn to. So we started forming uh, teams of people and they said, we want to help. We're from the culture, Selena's one of them. We're from the community. We want to be able to help our population. So we started looking at grants. We started applying for funding. We started looking at how we can help meet the needs. And there you go, and we've grown ever since. So we started with um, two promotores, and we're now at 13, and our promotores have been helping our Latino populations who are a lot of them, you know, could be undocumented or just people who struggle um, in poverty. Mm -hmm. But we're helping them to get access to the care that they need wow. so that they can thrive, so that they can do well for themselves and, and improve their family's life. That's incredible when you talk about 600,000. I mean, it's a sizable population. And to think that prior to y'all forming, that they really were being underserved. It's a true testament to the great work that you're doing. We see sort of behind us here, kind of your three pillars, right? Health, education, youth development. Mm -hmm. Can you expand a little bit more on those services and how they are directly affecting the community that you speak about? Absolutely. Um, before we started, people were calling us up and saying, I have no idea where to get health care. I don't know what doctor to go to. Nobody speaks my language. Nobody mm -hmm. understands me. So we applied for funding and we said, how can we help you get access to health care? So our grants helped to provide a health care visit to our community members. So we had a promotora saying, you know, Maria, we're going to take you to the doctor. We're going to meet with the doctor. We're going to tell you what the doctor said. We're going to help you get access to the medications or whatever you need. So wow. that's access to health care. And since that medical appointment, it's expanded to vision, to dental, to mental health, to nutrition. It's been all-inclusive because you can't just fix one thing and then expect everything else, right, to, sure. to be good. Um, on the education side, we had a lot of kids struggling with in school, and they didn't have the ability to understand what was going on, or maybe the parents spoke Spanish, and they didn't understand mm -hmm. why their child was struggling in school. So it was help. You know, we, well, well, right now, hello, we're going to meet you. We're going to go to the school, and we're going to understand what's going on with your child and help your child overcome these issues. And then it expanded also to some of the adults getting access to English as a second language. It's like, we know you're here. We know that you need to be able to speak English so that you can understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. How do we help you get that information? And then on the youth development piece of it, um, of course, we have a very robust right now youth development program where a lot of these kids are struggling to be understood, are wanting to make sure that they could um, greet each other, meet with each other, talk about the challenges they might be experiencing, whether that's just mental health issues or, or racism, which of course could cause you know, mental health issues. Um, so we have a lot of, of our students meeting with our youth promotores mm -hmm. and being able to talk to them and share their challenges and concerns and getting access to the care that they need as well but also learn how to become leaders. Mm -hmm. That's incredible, robust work. And I think it's, you know, the visibility is important. And so mm -hmm. I can imagine that for the community you serve, it's really important that you're from the culture, mm -hmm. right? In, in helping form that trust. So we've heard so many from stories from nonprofits talking about how the ongoing pandemic has really forced them to pivot and get creative with how they've offered their services and sort of what their services might need to bend and stretch to fix. Selena, can you speak to that, how that's been for your organization as we head into, well, well into 2021? Yeah, so we've always been a home visitation program. So with the whole pandemic, we never actually stopped doing those home visits. Just more, you know, careful with our masks, our hand sanitizers, and maybe meeting them outside of their home instead of inside, at parks, 
wherever they felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, asking them the question, are you feeling good? Is anybody in your family sick? And then also bringing in education about COVID and the symptoms. So mm -hmm. that's, and then we used to show up, you know, empty handed. Now we show up with food, with cleaning supplies, whatever the family's needs are. All of our families, you know, didn't um, continue working, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. You know, a lot of shops, restaurants, everything closed. So they were at home, not being able to provide even just a few meals a day. So we right. were able to provide that for them. That's incredible. And that the fact that you're bringing the outreach to them, right? Yeah. They're really meeting them where they are in the community, which is a huge asset that not a lot of nonprofits are doing. Have, have, as we head into this year's campaign, you know, we think about all the wonderful ways that the Our Promise campaign can really help these organizations deliver the, the vital source resources that they're they're giving to their community. What does partnering with a program like Our Promise mean to you two and to the organization as a whole? Well, certainly we don't have access to the, the broad audience that you do. Um, you know, we're a small nonprofit still by by most standards and we need to be able to tell our story. You know, we don't have a lot of ways we can tell the stories of the people that we're touching. Uh, we have a newsletter, we have you know, information going out on our website, but being able to partner with you means that we can really explain to people what we do and why it's important. And we hope that they see that because, again, it still remains an unserved and underserved community, even with our help. There's still uh, so much uh, support that they need and mm -hmm. you know they're they're really when we were delivering food that was incredibly helpful and when we're able to help them with their rent support that's fantastic but there are so many things that they weren't able to pay during the entire time and they still need that funding so right. this this partnership is important to us because we're able to reach a lot of people that wouldn't be able to otherwise so I thank you for being here well absolutely it's our pleasure you know money is raised from this campaign um, obviously help contribute to a lot of all of the services that that you provide but are there certain success stories or things that you can speak to that um, folks at home that are just learning about this organization might feel really empowered or inspired mm -hmm. by and hopefully give back to this yeah. wonderful organization oh my god where do we start there's so many even during covid we saw so many good things come out um, from dads being at home participating with their little ones reading books mm -hmm. um, we had aunts who were helping raise or grandmas raise you know their little kids and they their primary language is Nahuatl which is a dialect so they were learning they took that time to learn to um, learn how to read and write Spanish to be able to read wow. to the little ones and so just seeing the whole family get involved we were doing nutrition education for the youth via zoom and then the parents and the little siblings wanted to participate. So now the whole family is participating. Wow. We did parent project, we usually do it in person. This time we had to do it via Zoom. We weren't sure how it was gonna work and it worked out perfect. It was mm -hmm. great. We had grandmas participating. Um, we have a support group and we actually had one client that moved back to Acapulco. She's participating. Wow. So, you know, so it didn't close doors, it actually opened it up more. So if they're not here with us in this area, they can still participate and be part of the community. It's, it's incredible to hear the stories about how the services are wrapping around multi-generations and how that's really hoping, hopefully, to promote people again in the space where they live. So if folks want to learn more about this wonderful organization, where do we recommend that they go? Well, to our website, for sure, um, latinoleadershipcouncil.org. And you'll see all the different programs that are there uh, listed again. So it, it focuses on health, education, and youth development. But it also showcases a lot of the ways that we are transforming the systems. Mm -hmm. So we can't just fix the families and put a Band-Aid on and say, okay, be well, and go on. We're really uh, partnering with doctors, with schools, with community members to say, this is how you serve the Latino population. So that also talks about the way that we're making changes within our community, both with the providers and the community. So absolutely um, latinoleadershipcouncil.org and then uh, also on our Facebook page um, same same uh, Latino Leadership Council and any way that they want to you know communicate with us you know we have a phone number of course they can always do that they can send me an email <laughs> however it is that they need to do it but I love that you're addressing to change from a systemic point of view mm -hmm. as opposed to like you said just the quick band-aid fixes and well absolutely post uh, your social media handles your website links so that folks at home uh, can get that information. We'll also include your unique Our Promise campaign code so that folks are inspired by the amazing work that this organization is doing and can be sure that 
use that code for their contributions. Before we send off, is there anything you'd like to, to say to our viewers at home or just encourage them again to hit the website? Well, I think I think it's Hispanic Heritage yeah. Month. Hispanic Heritage Month. I say Latino Heritage Month. But we're here all year long, and we're doing fantastic work all year long. And our communities need our help. And if you are bilingual, bicultural, you understand, you know, the the needs that that your family has faced over the years. And we hope that you look to our family and you decide to donate so that we can help support our next generation of leaders. And thank you so much again for oh, having pleasure. us and inviting us. And it's our pleasure. I mean, truly, the great work of the, the Latino Leadership Council. What you guys are doing is 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 impacting so many who who really deserve the help. And it's great that you are filling this need in our community and far beyond. So thank you for sharing your time. Again, we will link all of their information right here in the little content portion of today's video. Please contribute what you can if you have the capacity to give. Please do so. Thank you again both so much for joining us today. Thank you. We really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. And don't forget the prize room. Oh, and actually, we've got, you can help us tease because <laughs> next week, right here, Tuesday, at our normal time at noon, you can log in live and we are giving away a fabulous prize. So stay tuned. Follow us along on social media, Instagram, and Facebook to hear more details about those prizes and be sure to tune in live next Tuesday for your chance to win. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.